Today, we're recapping the fantasy comedy movie called The Witches. Beware of spoilers ahead. A group of children watch a slideshow as a voice tells them that witches are real. And they hate children. Their whole purpose in life is to find and squash them. Soon, it's revealed that this voice belongs to our hero, who begins telling his story. In 1968, an eight-year-old boy tragically loses his mom and dad in a car accident and is sent to live with his grandmother in Demopolis, Alabama. Grandma leads the boy to his mother's childhood room and leaves him to unpack while she makes hot chocolate. But, surrounded by memories of his dead mother, the boy only feels more alone and depressed. His grandma does her best to try and cheer him up and bring him out of his shell. But the boy spends hours mourning his parents, ever refusing to eat or socialize with other children in the neighborhood. Grandma gives the boy a direct heart-to-heart, -heart, explaining that, sometimes, God wants to send a lesson to us in ways we don't understand. His mother's death feels unfair, but she interprets it as a sign God had a bigger plan for his mother. Somewhat comforted by the idea that it wasn't all for nothing, the boy eats some cornbread and show signs of progress. The next day, Grandma brings the boy a pet mouse to keep him comfort. When she asks what he's gonna call the mouse, he names her Daisy. Over the next few days, the boy comes out of his shell as he plays with and takes care of Daisy, teaching the mouse some new tricks. Eventually, he's back to his old self, dancing with Grandma and having a good time. But outside, a strange woman watches. Out of nowhere, Grandma suddenly comes down with a violent cough. The next day, the boy and his grandma go to the market. The boy asks grandma if he can buy some nails to build Daisy a house, but she insists that he gets the more expensive but safer nails. While he goes to get the nails, grandma once again experiences an intense cough. In the aisle, the boy is approached by a mysterious woman, the same one who was watching outside his house. She offers him a candy but his attention is caught by the snake slithering out of her sleeve. Sensing his terror, she assures him the snake is tame. Grandma, still coughing, comes to find the boy. Cinema recap here. We've got a little challenge that'll take five seconds, and it will change your life forever. You ready? All you gotta do is like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell, and you'll receive 10 free years of good luck. It's as simple as that. He tries to explain what happened and pushes for them to leave early, but she's too distracted by her cough to pay attention. Realizing something is amiss, she agrees that they should go. Back at home, Charlie describes the woman he saw in the store, but Grandma clearly already knows what happened. After asking a few extra questions, she reveals that the woman in the grocery store was a witch, and she knows that for a fact, because she saw one herself. When Grandma was a child, she saw her best friend take candy from a strange woman. The next day, the girl mysteriously and inexplicably turned into a chicken. Grandma told everybody what had happened, but nobody believed her, instead assuming that the girl simply ran away. Every day, she would visit her friend in the chicken pen, but she never turned back into a human. Realizing the danger they're in, Grandma goes into a locked closet to reveal a treasure trove of medicinal herbs and elixirs and ancient healing books. After consulting a crystal, Grandma tells the boy that they need to leave and make arrangements to stay at a safe local hotel. Because witches only prey on the poor, Grandma believes that a hotel filled with rich white people is the safest place imaginable. As they arrive at the hotel, Grandma explains that there's a coven of witches in every part of the country and the world, but all of them are ruled by one of the worst witches to ever live the Grand High Witch. As Grandma checks in, the boy waves at a young boy, who's clearly mistreated and unappreciated by his mother. Suddenly, Grandma suffers another coughing fit as the hotel manager, Mr. Stringer, introduces himself. As they disappear into the elevator, a large group of witches arrive, led by the Grand High Witch herself. Mr. Stringer welcomes them to the hotel, but after seeing her cat, Hades, informs them that pets are not allowed. The Grand High Witch questions what would happen if a mouse had somehow gotten into the hotel. Mr. Stringer explains that he would call the exterminator and get them wiped out. 
something that pleases the Grand High Witch in her coven. That night, Grandma suffers another aggressive cough. She claims that the cough is caused by witches and explains that witches aren't women at all. They're demons. And they're easy to recognize by their makeup, large nose holes, gloves and sleeves to hide their claws, heels to hide their deformed feet, and wigs to cover their bald heads. Grandma assures the boy that the witches can't harm them because they don't know where they are. But as they settle into sleep, Hades watches through the window and hurries down into the Grand High Witch's room to tell her. The next morning, the boy orders his grandma a big, delicious room service breakfast. Still suffering from her cough, she tells him to go to the beach or keep himself busy for the day. But after jokingly mentioning the risk of sea snakes, she unintentionally frightens the boy. Deciding against going to the beach, the boy wanders around the hotel, wandering into a room booked for the children's society meeting. Before he can enter, he's caught by Bruno, the kid he waved at the day before. The ever-hungry Bruno reveals that he's been told to meet a nice lady in the room, who promised him six bars of chocolate. Bruno is discovered and dragged away by his mother, but the boy goes into the room alone to train with his mouse. The boy sets up for his mouse training, but he's forced to hide beneath the stage when Mr. Stringer leads the Grand High Witch in the coven inside. The witches push Stringer out and lock the room from the inside. The Grand High Witch smells something strange, but she commands the witches to remove their disguises anyway, revealing their true and horrific appearances. The Grand High Witch angrily chastises the coven for their lack of success in finding and killing children. When one witch dares question the Grand High Witch's plan, she publicly kills the insubordinate witch. But admitting that it's a good question, the Grand High Witch explains her plan to wipe out children everywhere. The witches will each open a new candy store in their area, using the money found in a trunk in her room, number 666. The candy stores will sell high-quality candy laced with a mouse maker potion which will turn children into mice that can then be squashed or otherwise exterminated. The Grand High Witch reveals that she bribed a young boy, Bruno, to come and get chocolate as a demonstration of her plan. Suddenly, the Grand High Witch smells a child beneath the stage, but when she rips the stage away, finds nothing. Right before she can get to the vent where the boy is hiding, Bruno turns up, demanding his chocolate. The Grand High Witch, now back in her disguise, lures the boy in with the six bars she promised him. But on cue, Bruno begins having a violent seizure, transforming into a mouse before the witch's very eyes. The Grand High Witch orders the coven to squash the mouse, forcing Bruno to go fleeing for his life. Inside the vent, Daisy, who reveals that she can now speak, vows to help Bruno. Daisy drags Bruno to their hiding spot, unintentionally leading the Grand High Witch to find the boy. She drags him out, but the boy refuses to open his mouth. Unable to feed the boy, the Grand High Witch forces the serum into his ear, turning the boy into a mouse. With the help of Daisy and Bruno, the boy manages to flee into the vent, chased by the Grand High Witch's elongated arms. The mice escape and the Grand High Witch's claws get mangled in the fan as she tries to grab them. Daisy explains that the witches like to turn children into mice to kill them easier, revealing that she, too, was once a human girl. The boy plans to lead them to his grandma's room, taking a shortcut through the kitchen and the lobby. On the fourth floor, the mice make it to grandma's room, climbing up to ring the doorbell. But the maid sees and chases them, before contacting the exterminator. The frantic maid locks the mice in Grandma's room. The boy starts talking to Grandma, trying to explain what happened to them. She realizes that her grandson met and was transformed by the Grand High Witch, as were the other mice. Daisy explains that a year earlier she ran away from an orphanage, took candy from a stranger, and was also turned into a mouse. She also reveals that her real name is Mary. The boy reveals the Grand High Witch's plan to turn children into mice and kill them. Grandma agrees to look after the mice, keeping them safe from humans that may try to exterminate them. Hotel Maintenance enters the room, laying a series of rat traps all over. 
featuring delicious cheese that Bruno struggles to resist. Grandma suggests that if she could get some of the serum, she could reverse engineer a cure. The group concoct a plan to break into the Grand High Witch's room while the witches are at dinner that evening. From their balcony above her room, Grandma and the boy watch as the Grand High Witch stores the potion in an ice bucket, which is then hidden away inside her room. Concealing the boy in a knitted pouch, Grandma successfully lowers him down to the room below theirs. In the Grand High Witch's room, the boy scales his way onto the table, successfully stealing one of the potions. But before he can leave, the Grand High Witch returns with Hades, who has been denied access to the dining room. The Grand High Witch reveals her huge trunk of money, which she plans to use to bribe Mr. Stringer. The boy rushes outside, climbing into the pouch with the serum. Grandma begins pulling it up, but the Grand High Witch stops the ascent, suddenly realizing that she's seen the grandma somewhere before. But before she can remember, Mr. Stringer interrupts with a kitty carrier for Hades. Grandma pulls the boy up safely. The Grand High Witch refuses the kitty carrier, but Hades seems to love it. She demands that Mr. Stringer ensure there be no garlic or flavoring in the pea soup, something he accepts. Angry at Hades, the Grand High Witch locks him inside. In her room, Grandma attempts to reverse engineer a cure for the potion, but it doesn't work. The potion apparently doesn't alter itself, meaning that the mice will likely never return to their human forms. Grandma's upset that she couldn't save the children, but the boy doesn't seem to mind it too much. He asks if his grandma will continue to take care of him as a mouse, and she promises to look after him and his friends always, no matter how they may look. Daisy insists that they can still take down the witches, even if they're mice. The boy comes up with a plan to slip the potion into the witch's pea soup, turning them into mice and saving children everywhere. Before the meal, Grandma helps sneak the mice and the potion into the vents. In the kitchen, the boy sneaks in, pouring the whole serum into the flavorless pea soup. But as the boy sneaks out, one of the chefs notices the mouse and calls an exterminator. In the lobby, Bruno points out his parents to Grandma who decides she's going to have a word with them. She reveals to his parents that their son has been turned into a mouse, but Bruno is too busy eating to say anything to them. His hysterical parents storm off in a wave of panic and terror. The boy returns, with all three mice hiding out in Grandma's bag as they watch the witches receive the soup. Mr. Stringer pulls Grandma aside to ask if she's hiding mice, she denies the claims, turning the table on him by publicly revealing the rat traps all over the hotel. Hoping to maintain the hotel's pristine image, Mr. Stringer grants her access to the finest table in the restaurant. Grandma instead takes a seat near the kitchen, with a prime view of the witches. But before the Grand High Witch can eat the soup, she spots Grandma and starts to approach. The Grand High Witch reveals that she now remembers who Grandma was taunting her with the knowledge that she turned her best friend into a chicken and loved it. But the Grand High Witch is suddenly distracted as the witches turn into ugly rats, one by one. The mice seize the moment, stealing the dangling key from her pocket. As the restaurant descends into chaos, Grandma and the mice slip into room 666, the Grand High Witch's room. Inside, they find a treasure trove of the mouse potion with Grandma planning to steal all of it, but some of the bottles drop on the floor and under the bed. The mice head down to get it, but are distracted by the Grand High Witch's return, unbeknownst to Grandma. The witch threatens to kill Grandma in excruciating detail, but the mice snap the traps onto her feet and force her to swallow the mouse serum. In seconds, the Grand High Witch turns into a hideous, deformed rat. The Grand High Witch chases the mice through the mousetrap-lined room, but Grandma traps her inside a glass container stacked with books. The boy searches through the Grand High Witch's remains to find the key to the trunk. He hands it to his grandma, who opens the trunk to reveal all the money, and a book containing the names of every witch in the world. They plan to hunt every witch down and turn them into rats. Before she leaves, Grandma hurries out to the balcony, releasing Hades from his cage. As Grandma leaves, Hades knocks the books off the container and releases the Grand High Witch before killing her. The next day, 
Grandma and the mice leave the hotel. Grandma so happy that she tips every member of the staff generously with the money she stole from the Grand High Witch. Grandma approaches Bruno's mother, allowing their son to explain that he is a mouse. Sadly, Bruno's mom and dad aren't thrilled about the idea of having a mouse as a son. So Bruno decides to stay with Grandma, the boy, and Daisy permanently. At home, the mice enjoy a ride on an elaborate roller coaster contraption throughout the house. The boy tells his grandma that, even though he's a mouse, he still feels like a boy, and she encourages him to never give up what you are inside. She still sees him as her grandson, not a mouse. The boy asks how long mice live, and while he and grandma are aware that mice only live for a short few years or so, they decide to make the most of their time together as a big happy family. At Christmas, the mice enjoy a dance party with grandma. A slideshow reveals the adventures grandma and the mice had over the next few years, including buying a trailer with the words witch hunters on it. Finally, we return to our hero, now an older mouse, and the slideshow that began the story. Having successfully eradicated witches from the United States, he and his grandma are looking to take their battle to the entire world, to free children all over the planet from the witches. The children watching the slideshow are the latest witch hunter recruits, all of them with their own names to hunt down and destroy using the mouse maker potion. The children seem very excited about the opportunity. Finally, Grandma looks at our hero and asks if he's ready for this mission. He replies that he's never been more ready in his life, and she looks on with pride as the children head out to destroy the witches.